Taproot upgrade is here. Bitcoin just got better. This is a brand new era for Bitcoin. But you are probably asking yourself, what the hell is Taproot? Well, don't worry. That's why you watch this show, because we've got your back. To understand Taproot, you first have to understand who the market participants are with Bitcoin. There are three specific market participants that are worth mentioning for this conversation. First, we are going to start with the developers. The developers obviously are the folks who are writing code. They are responsible for creating and updating the code. They are there for contributing to the software database. They write code and they go ahead and they contribute that code to the code base. The miners are there because they are there to secure the network. Miners secure the network by using computing power to run the Bitcoin network. They get paid from the block reward. 50 Bitcoin to every 10 minutes, then 25, then 12 and a half, then 6.25. That's how the miners work. And then lastly, we have the full known operators, full node operators. They are the backbone of the cryptocurrency network. These folks are there to validate, send and receive blocks and transactions and maintain a copy of the blockchain. So in a quick synopsis, we have the developers, we have the miners, and we have the full node operators. Now, why is that important? Well, because when the code changes, when there are upgrades, these three people come into play. First, the software developers, they actually write the software that is going to be the change that is accepted or not accepted. The second is the miners who get to actually secure the network. But everyone forgets, it's the node operators. They are ultimately the judge, the jury, and the executioner. The node operators decide which version of the software they want to actually run or not. So with that said, we are have to understand there's two types of updates. They are called forks, software forks. There's a hard fork and a soft fork. And a hard fork first is an ability to change the code, but that new code is not compatible with the old code. This is a very aggressive change. This means that if I said, hey, we can handle 10 transactions, and then all of a sudden I was to expand that, and I say, now we don't actually accept 10 transactions, we can actually do 15 transactions. Well, any block that had 15 transactions would not be compatible with the old blocks that can only accept 10 transactions. So it's an aggressive change that is not compatible moving forward. It's tech, that is why it's called hard fork. It's hard, it's aggressive, it's very different. That would not allow you to be compatible with the old code. A soft fork is very different. A soft fork is a change to the code that is still compatible with the old code. So you can still run the old code and be in compatibility with the new code and vice versa. So Hard fork is aggressive, big change. Soft fork is less aggressive, not nearly as big of a change. The hard fork versus soft fork. Fundamentally, both above types of forks serve different purposes. Contentious hard forks can divide a community, but planned ones allow the freedom to modify the software with everybody in agreement. That is what a soft fork is. Everybody in agreement to modify the software. Soft forks are a gentler option. Generally speaking, you're more limited in what you can do as your new changes can't conflict with the old rules. That said, if your update can be crafted in such a way that it remains compatible, you don't need to worry about fragmenting the network. So this comes from the Binance Academy definitions. Very good. Hard fork versus soft fork. Soft fork is agreement of everybody, and it's a gentler option that allows you to make the changes that don't come in conflict with the old changes. That is what we are watching with Taproot Upgrade. So the Taproot description from Bitcoin Magazine. Taproot is a combination of many different Bitcoin improvement pro proposals, the BIPs, resulting in a soft fork of Bitcoin's blockchain. So Taproot is a soft fork. It's a gentle option. It has agreement of everyone. It is a proposed upgrade that over time is adopted as the only blockchain, meaning that the old one will cease to operate once the new one, Taproot, is fully adopted. Now, what exactly is inside the Taproot upgrade? What is the actual things that are happening? We've got two different descriptions. The first one coming from Bitcoin Magazine, a little bit more technical in nature. The first major point is around this Schnorr signatures, right? It's a very technical component. But what you have to understand is that you're able to do things around key and signature aggregation. You can take a bunch of different signatures and put them together rather than have them be individually identified provides superior security, and it can batch verification. So step one, Schnorr signatures. Step two, 
is Taproot itself. This was a separate Bitcoin improvement proposal. Taproot itself ends up showing us that there are a couple of different aspects to this. Bitcoin script update, pay to Taproot, and mast. These allow for certain types of compatibility with the Schnorr signature. So Taproot and Schnorr signatures kind of go together. And then the third thing is around smart contracts. And around those smart contracts, something called TapScript. TapScript actually allows us to look at the collection of op codes, which are essentially just lines of code that execute commands in the Bitcoin protocol that have been updated to make way for the new changes installed by Taproot. Really, really complex in terms of execution, but when you simply look at it, it allows for much more expressiveness and much more composability with Bitcoin. This brings us closer and closer to the ability to not just use Bitcoin as a pure payment system, but to actually have it do other things, and that is why people are very excited. So if we go ahead and we look at CNBC, not such a technical uh, update, Mackenzie Siglos had a great overview this weekend. She wrote, a big part of Bitcoin's makeover has to do with digital signatures, which are like the fingerprint on individual leaves on every transaction. It won't translate to greater anonymity for your individual Bitcoin address on the public blockchain, but it will make simple transactions indistinguishable from those that are more complex and compromised of multiple signatures. So if we think exactly what does this mean, your public Bitcoin address does not change in terms of uh, whether it's more has more anonymity or not. But what does change is that a simple transaction will be indistinguishable from something that has much more complex and complicated signature structure. So it provides more privacy in a very specific way. She went on to write that uh, this, uh, in practice, that means greater privacy because your keys won't have as much exposure on the chain. You can kind of hide who you are a little bit better, which is good. This comes from Brandon Arvanani, who is a Bitcoin mining engineer and who runs Meow. On top of that, we then have the smart contracts. These are souped up signatures that are also a game changer for smart contracts, which are self-executing agreements that live on the blockchain. The smart contract could theoretically be used for practically any kind of transaction from paying your rent each month to registering your vehicle. Taproot makes smart contracts cheaper and smaller in terms of the space they take up on the blockchain. And uh, Colleen uh, said that they are enhanced functionality. Also, they currently smart contracts can be created both on Bitcoin's core protocol layer and on the Lightning Network, a payments platform built on top of Bitcoin, which enables instant transactions. These smart contracts executed on the Lightning Network typically lead to faster and less costly transactions. So when we go ahead and we look at this, the big takeaway for the Taproot upgrade is that there are three separate big components to it. There is the signatures, there is the tap script itself, and also you have the compatibility with the Schnorr signatures. When you look at it from an everyday person, the only thing that matters is that there is more privacy and more usability coming to Bitcoin. That ultimately is good for Bitcoin. And so if you hold Bitcoin, you like the fact that it is improving, that it is evolving, that it is getting better and better over time. 